Always use jack stands. Hey guys, welcome back. Got another project today. Today we're working on a 2013 E450 Super Duty. It's a 3011 DS. And we got a little problem. I'm hoping you can see that right there. That part up here broke off. It didn't really break off, but it broke the bracket and then slid up on this bolt right here. Anyways, I'll bring you along on the repair. Hopefully stuff stops breaking around here because I'd really like to get back to playing with the tractor and doing stuff on that. Unless that breaks, then I have to fix it. Right now I'm just trying to get caught up so that summertime I can just do tractor stuff and, you know, enjoy summer. I love white lithium grease. I always like to lube my nuts before I take them out, or I mean take them off. That way all the rust that's sitting on the threads won't tear it up as I zip them off, you know? Whew, them things are on there. I got a tool for that. If you haven't seen this dolly, I like to use this dolly from Harbor Freight. Just for things like this. That way I'm not... Wow, oh, that sucker's on there. There's a little rust on the hubs. I'm going to do that off camera. All right, let's take you in here and get a better look. There you go. Now you can see what I'm talking about. Yeah, I felt kind of funny with the six tons. I put 10 ton jacks under, so that should be strong enough. Those are the two bolts on one side and the other ones are back there. Just thought I'd show you how cramped it is in here. Oh wow, they were not very tight. Everybody's in a hurry to put things together. Just so you can see it better, I took this wrench, it's like 3 8 and I slipped it over the tube. And then, see that gap? When you push it, it closes. And then it releases the hose. I'm probably gonna have to cut off a little bit, clean it up so it doesn't leak when I put it back together. Okay, it's out. And this is the piece that was broken off. Kind of goes right there. I should probably buy another piece or just a whole nother bracket, but what's the fun in that? I think I could just weld it and do my best to make it strong and put it back in. It's a little bent, so I'm gonna knock it down here a little bit. Well, that's the side that's broke and the opposite side from that I noticed there's a little crack maybe you can see that or not but a crack starting there so I'm gonna clean that up and probably well put a weld on that too before it gets any worse well slight change of plans I think since I'm this far I'm just gonna go for it and I think I'm gonna add some two inch lift blocks because this thing's uh already sagging I mean this springs pretty beat up we recently went to the West Coast and driving through New Mexico in that slow lane just destroyed them. I mean, they were kind of sagging already, I think, but after that, it was it was pretty it was pretty brutal. A new set of springs would probably be the best way to go, but I don't got that kind of money. So, I'm just going to put a 2-inch lift block under there, 
which is turning out to be kind of a fiasco because it's kind of hard to find lift blocks that have three quarter inch pinholes. I might have to modify some that are close. I gotta take this apart and make sure the measurements are right before I go and ordering stuff. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do. I mean, the previous owner already bent this part. They must have hit the back of the RV on something pretty solid because it's supposed to look like that. So I think the two inch lift is gonna help. I usually angle my approaches to driveways, but sometimes you just can't, you know, and that's probably how that happened. I don't know. We got a 15 16th socket. Just like rowing a boat. Got my office chair on wheels. My morning exercise. Okay, we're learning as we go here. I still don't have enough clearance, so I'm just gonna take them all the way off. I got a jack under the axle. Uh, yeah. much room in there. I'm gonna probably have to drop both sides. I'm doing one side at a time right now. I don't know if I can get a two inch block in there. I just need to get that measurement of that pin in there. Huh, I'm gonna have to do this off camera, sorry. I beveled all the edges and cleaned up everything around the spot where I'm gonna weld. I'm gonna tack weld it first and I'm gonna weld it on both sides. It's done. It's not perfect. I'm gonna take a grinder to it to clean it up. And this is the part that I touched up because I already started seeing a crack. And then I welded on both sides. There's the other side. I really gotta take a grinder to that weld. But that way it'll sit flat against the frame anyway. The main thing is I just got the heat on there. I just wanted to make sure it burned in real good all the way down in that bevel I made in the valley. You welders know, I'm not a welder, I just know enough to get by. So I got my lifting blocks, but the pin is five eighths. Turns out the pin on the, on the bottom of the spring is three quarters of an inch. Since the pin is small, I got a fix for that. So it turns out it's even smaller than five eighths. Five eighths would be 0.625 and this is like 0.610. I got this piece of tubing that I usually use to tighten up my vise. So I'm gonna cut a couple of basically spacers here and then I'll, I'll slot it and then it'll spread out and go over this. We'll see how it goes when I spread this out and what the finished product is, but I think it's gonna be close. Well, we're up to 0 0.730, which is pretty close to three quarters of an inch. It's made out of stainless steel, so it shouldn't rust. If I were you, I would just buy blocks that had three quarter inch holes and three quarter inch pins. It's not perfect, but it's a tight fit. Okay, that white line is where the pin is. It's going through the stack of leaf springs and the holes over here. So the axle must have moved forward as it came down. So I'm gonna have to, I guess, jack up the axle and I'm gonna strap it and try to pull it back towards that line. I'm kind of embarrassed to show you this, but one thing led to another and I'm gonna show you what I did. I think I got tunnel vision. Just so you can see what I got going on here. I got the strap strapped to the frame to pull it towards the back of the RV. And I got this strap running over to the boat leaf spring tied off to pull it out because for some reason it went more towards the driver's side. And the axle wants to rotate. 
the tip of it just wants to rotate up. So yeah, I got a jack under this side. I'm doing what it takes, I guess. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I did that. Roast me in the comments. Okay, we're in. You can see the other one there. We're in on both sides. The deciding factor was the shock is actually too short. It was trying to twist the axle tube. So we're good now. And I'll put these on once I get some weight on this axle and drive it up. Right now the suspension is pretty much extended all the way down as far as it'll go actually further because now we got the two inch blocks in there. I'll bring you back after I get that far. As of right now, I can put my U-bolts in. It's pretty straightforward from here. I'm tightening it in a crisscross pattern and you want to kind of keep all the threads the same length. And these are a little long, so I'm going to cut them down and I'll show you what I use to cut it down. There's like three different ways to do it. the bandsaw better though not as loud For some reason they have this one next to the brake caliper so this bolt was the other way. It has to be something to do with being close to the caliper or something. see the little indention in the tubing you want to cut it off just past that so that you can shove the new piece of tubing into the fitting that's on top of here it's like a shark bike fitting type deal anyways you shove it in all the way and then you pull on it and it, it squeezes down on it at this point check the air line, make sure that's seated right. If it's leaking air, push it in all the way and then pull it as tight and pretty tight. And then it'll, it should seal. If you have to get a flathead screwdriver and kind of pry on the part that kind of slides in and out. Uh, it seemed to, that seemed to work. And that's what the repair looks like on the bracket. I put a little extra on there to make sure it don't break again. You can see the difference on the other side. When you put the wheels on, there's a roll pin inserted in the hub. That way you know which way the hand holes on the rim go so that your air nozzle or Schrader valve can be accessible.
Now that it's on the ground, the shock's in the right spot. I could put that in there and then I can tighten up the sway bar and we're good to go. This is before the two inch lift blocks, and this is after. You can see how much higher it is. When I make a video, sometimes I don't know what's gonna happen. I almost edited that one part out, but I thought I'd share it. It all worked out in the end, and I'm happy with the results. I know this is a temporary fix. I got my eye on a Weltec two inch lift kit, but I have to save up for that. This will be the first RV video in a new playlist that I'm gonna make. Thanks for checking out the video. Have a great day, and keep it on the sunny side. What'd you do, buddy? Did you dig yourself a hole? That hole looks pretty cozy.